Hey, what's up guys? As smartphone companies try to maximize screen size, it's hard to find phones without screen cutouts for the selfie cam. But there are some more creative options making their way onto the mid-range scene. I'm Wilford GSM Marina, and this is our Oppo F11 Pro review. The Oppo F11 Pro comes with a stunning gradient finish. Ours goes from blue to black to purple, and though it is made of plastic, it really does look like glass. The phone seems pretty durable and doesn't feel cheap, despite the plastic. But of course, at this price point, waterproofing is a bit much to ask for. It probably wouldn't even be possible either, thanks to one of the F11 Pro's key features, the motorized pop-up selfie cam. It hides inside the body and comes out when you need it. It isn't slow, but we've seen faster on other phones. Oppo did a nice job with the aesthetics here though. The selfie cam is directly in the center, in line with the rear camera bump. It all looks symmetrical and kind of satisfying. And since the bump is centered, the phone doesn't wobble much on the table. Of course, you could slap on the included case if you want the most stability. Thanks to the hidden selfie cam, the Oppo F11 Pro's tall 6.53 inch display has minimal bezels and is notch free, unlike the regular F11. It's an IPS LCD with a 1080p resolution. Here you get a great full screen experience with pretty deep blacks. And at 400 ppi, content looks crisp. Color accuracy is just average by default, but you can improve it by turning the color slider to warm in settings. Maximum brightness sits at 440 nits, and there's no boost if you're in auto mode. It's okay for the class though, and sunlight legibility is good here. You can unlock the F11 Pro with the fingerprint reader located on the back. It's always on and very fast. And of course, you can open your phone using face unlock. It's a bit less secure, but it's an excuse to play around with the selfie cam and impress people. The Oppo F11 Pro has one loudspeaker at the bottom. It posted a score of very good in our loudness test and quality is excellent, with rich and deep sound. Plugging in headphones through the 3.5mm jack degrades the stereo quality quite a lot, and loudness is only average. There is FM radio though. You get 64 or 128 gigs of storage on the F11 Pro, and it is expandable through the hybrid slot. Unfortunately, Oppo is still sticking to micro USB ports on its mid-range phones, instead of switching to USB-C. The F11 Pro runs Android 9 Pie with ColorOS 6 on top. It looks a bit different from stock Android. You can choose to store your apps in an app drawer, or to keep them all on the home screen. Swiping to the left takes you to smart assistant panels, which give you things like a calendar, step tracker, and a space for shortcuts. And swiping from a bar on the right edge of the screen opens a space for shortcuts too. There's a game space where you can store your games, and change settings for performance and blocking notifications. And the phone comes with some gesture options. You can swipe up and hold to see recent apps, swipe from bottom left or bottom right to go back, and swipe up from the middle to go home. The Oppo F11 Pro is powered by a Helio P70 chipset and either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. It also has a dedicated chip for AI-driven tasks. Performance is smooth, with no heating or throttling issues. Games run well too, especially if you take the time to tweak their settings in the game space. With a 4000 mAh battery, you'd expect battery life on the F11 Pro to be pretty good. And you'd be right. It scored an excellent endurance rating of 109 hours in our proprietary tests. The phone also brings 20 watt Vogue fast charging. It isn't blazing fast, but decent. We were able to charge from 0 to 40% in 30 minutes. The Oppo F11 Pro comes with a dual camera setup. There's a 48 megapixel f1.8 main cam with face detection autofocus, and a 5 megapixel one for depth sensing and portrait mode. Because of quad bayer technology, the default output of the main cam is 12 megapixels. In good light, shots come out excellent. There's plenty of detail, high dynamic range, lively and accurate colors, superb contrast, and overall very nice processing. We did find one issue. In areas of uniform colors, there are noticeable patterns of noise. You can toggle on the Dazzle Color Mode, which uses advanced image stacking to improve the dynamic range further than HDR. It also adds some saturation to the colors, but you lose some fine details. If you really want to shoot in 48 megapixels, you can do it, but the photos you'll get are far from impressive. They're just upscaled versions of the 12 megapixel ones, with no improvement in detail. The photos we took in portrait mode are excellent. Subject separation works very well and transitions from sharp to defocused are quite smooth. These are among the better portraits we've seen, flagships included. Thanks to the bright f1.8 lens, normal shots in low light come out excellent as well, way beyond what we expected for the class. There is nice detail, 
low noise levels, balanced highlights, and excellent contrast. There's even a dedicated ultra night mode. Each shot takes a few seconds, but it gives you a brighter exposure and cleans up noise. Dynamic range is improved and you get boosted contrast and saturation, but you lose some fine detail. On to the selfie cam. It's 16 megapixels in f2.0, and there's no autofocus here. It does a decent job. There's nice colors and detail, and dynamic range is good for a selfie shooter. For video, the F11 Pro maxes out at 1080p at 30fps, even though the Helio P70 can handle 4K videos. Quality is good though. There's plenty of resolved detail, accurate colors, low noise, and stereo sound recording. EIS is always on, and dynamic range is average. Thanks to the high-res sensor, you can also shoot videos with 2 times lossless zoom, and their quality is on par with the regular 1080p ones. So that's the Oppo F11 Pro. With this shiny package, you get a solid chipset, a large notchless screen, excellent battery life, and a great camera experience. There are only a few things left to complain about. The micro USB port is kind of a bummer. Plus, this isn't the cheapest mid-ranger around, at around 25,000 rupees, or 320 euros. That said, if you're looking for a totally notch-free device, the Oppo F11 Pro is one of the best you can find right now, and definitely deserves a recommendation. But if going notchless isn't your priority, it's worth it to shop around. There are a lot of competing phones that you can find for less money. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.